Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this interactive holiday card using some products from Lawn Fawn. We are going to make a before and after baking scene featuring the a creature was stirring stamp and die set from Lawn Fawn and then we're also going to use these three interactive dies. So these are the three interactive dies that you'll need to make the card. You'll need the magic picture changer die, the add-on as well as the oven add-on. So you need all three pieces in order to make the oven um, function for this card. And then you'll also need the A Creature With Stirring stamp and die set to add the little decorations of the mice and the cookies um, to the card. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've die cut all of my pieces out ahead of time and I've colored everything. And I thought we could just focus on assembling the oven and then I will show you how to make the little before and after scene. So the first thing I did was I um, cut out our oven and the base of the oven is that one die cut from the magic picture changer add-on. So that's that second die that we saw in the picture. And then these other three pieces that we're adding, so the little silver um, square, so that's the window of the stove and then this little piece here and those two little um, cream colored pieces we're gonna add to the stove are part of the oven um, die add-on. So I cut out two of these little pieces and we're going to use that for the top and bottom of the oven. Now, the cool thing about this oven is that there are a bunch of different ways to use the die to get like a different look to your stove, depending on what kind of stove you wanna make. Um, I'm gonna show you this, the, this version, but then where there are options to kind of mix and match or do something a little different with the dies. I'll try to point that out in the video. So now I am just gathering all my little knobs for the stove. So I cut all of this out on some silver foil paper. And before we add the knobs, we're going to add this little decorative piece to the bottom of the stove. So I guess that's the handle um, or maybe the vent for the stove. Um, it can be, I guess, lots of things. It's going to give us a little place for our little mice to stand in a bit. Now I'm going to arrange five knobs on the stove and to make sure that I get them all equally placed out. This is kind of how I do it. I put my knob in the middle, I put my knobs on the end, and then I take half the distance between um, both of those. And then I put my fourth and fifth knobs in. So it's just a little trick there if you wanna be able to get perfect placement with your die cuts. I also made sure that the knobs are arranged in different, um, in, in, in different styles. So it looks like they're all turned all different ways. Um, now to put the burners together. So there are two ways to do this. Um, the way that I did it, I made it so that the little metal part peaks up. You can also assemble it so that the metal piece um, sits kind of right on top, like you can put it on upside down. So it looks like the little black knob is also part of the stove. It just depends on how you want it to look. Um, I thought for the card I was making that this look was better where you didn't really see much of the black. It just kind of looked like it's a surface as opposed to the little metal grates are sitting on the knob, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna attach that to the back with some glue. And then if the glue seeped out a little bit, I just wipe it off quickly with my um, little tool there. And then I'll scrape off the rest with my other tool. I'm using Art Glitter Glue. I love this glue because it has a really fine tip applicator and it also um, doesn't get clogged up that often, which is good. When you're using fine tipped applicators, I find that's my biggest challenge with them is they get clogged often. Now for our um, back panel, I just cut out an A2 size piece of some pattern paper that Lawn Fawn just released and I just put it uh, against the hole card back. Now we're going to start coloring in our before and after scene. So I drew in a little square here just so that I know where the window is going to be so I can make sure that my scene is kind of um, centered within the window so that you can see all the things I want you to see. And um, then we're just going to color in our little unrisen loaf of bread and our little uncooked cookies with some light color brown Copic markers. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to color our before scene with some light pale colors. And then for our baked cookies, we're going to have the cookies look more golden brown. And then the little tree is going to be a bright green. So it'll look like the um, frosting. 
set really, really well in the, um, in, in the oven while cooking. And our little loaf of bread in the back is going to rise to about three times its size. It's going to look really, really cute and yummy when we're done. I'm using some toner grease for the tray. I think you can use any colors you like. I am going to color in the background of the oven black for our before scene. And then for our after scene, we're going to add a little bit of a glow to just make it look like the oven's nice and hot and toasty and um, just cooked our little baked items really well. So I'm just going to take my black marker here and just apply it all around the scene. And I applied it a little bit um, outside the outline of that main square just because um, some more of the scene will show through when we actually activate the, um, the magic picture changer mechanism. And I'll go through all that and I'll do a little refresher of how to use the magic picture changer um, die set again. I actually had to go back and watch one of my old videos to remind myself. Um, and while I was working through it, I also came up with some like little um, hints to kind of remind myself the next time I do this, which way to do it. So here I'm just showing you that the larger piece in the first die set, um, you use that for your before scene. So the way that I remember this is um, bigger, you know, before is bigger or before is more so that I know that I have two different dies to cut the before and after the before one is going to be the larger of the two dies. So um, before is more or before is bigger. That's kind of how I'm going to try to remember it in the future. Um, so let's go ahead and work on our after scene. Now, the first time that I made these cards, I used Nina Solar White cardstock in 80 pound weight. The 120 pound weight will not work. You will um, have a lot of difficulties and your, your project will tear um, and you may not, uh, you know, be able to activate the mechanism. So you need to use a thin paper. So the first time I used Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock and now I'm just using Express It Blending Card. Um, which is my new favorite paper and it works really really well for this technique because it's a thin paper and what I like about this is that you can get a really really good quality Copic paper um, so that your scene is looks beautiful when when you apply the markers to it but then it's also thin enough to let the magic picture changer um, mechanism activate well so that you can um, use the card many many times before maybe it stops working Okay, so like I said earlier, for our little um, baked goods, I'm just covering, coloring them in in some brighter, deeper tones just so that they look like they're all good and baked. And if you notice, the little cookies there have spread out from their before um, version, which is what would happen if we were cooking in our ovens. I love that when chocolate chip cookies, they start as little balls and they come out as these, right, great big giant flat cookies. I'm going to color in our tray with the same color and I'm going to add a little bit of a glow just right there under the bread and around the cookies just so that it looks like they're all hot and toasty from being in the oven. And then I'm going to go ahead and color in the rest of the background. This time I'm going to add a a glow around the the bread so I started with my Y11 and then I'll blend it out with some Y35 and then I will take a YR21 and try to blend things a little further but I think that didn't work quite well so I went back with the Y13 and then we can start coloring in the rest of the stove so the rest of it is going to be dark just like the first one, but not as dark. So I'm going to apply a base of C3 and C4. I switched to C4 just because my marker was running out here. Um, so I just went and got the C4. And then we're going to um, gradually build out the color as we get to the, um, out, the outside, the edges of this rectangle. And again, I went um, farther beyond the scene than that little square that I drew originally because some parts of this paper is going to show through when we activate the um, the mechanism to make the car switch from a before to an after scene. Um, but again, I did draw that little square that I just traced the die itself to make sure that the main part of the scene is within the window that 
um, you know, you'll be able to see within the oven. And this will all make sense when, once we start putting the card together. So I'm just gonna finish up the coloring here and then we can move on to assembling our Magic Picture Changer mechanism. Okay, so now that our coloring is done, I'm gonna take my smaller die from the original Magic Picture Changer set and just arrange it over my scene and then um, tape it and then die cut it. So the afterpiece, remember, is the smaller of the two. Um, I don't have a, a little hint for the after, but as long as you remember the before, before is more, before is bigger, you'll know which um, mechanism to use. So there we have our before scene on the right on the left and then our after scene on the right. And I will die cut these and now we can put them together. So here I saw that I just needed to add a little bit more ink to the um, top and bottom of this piece just to make sure that um, all, none of the white shows through. Now I'm gonna fold our before scene in half at the score lines and then also at the sides on the score lines. So these are really, really thin um, edges here. It's about an eighth of an inch and you're going to need an eighth of an inch score tape to um, tape down these little folds. So we're gonna add tape to the outside and the inside of the fold of paper here. So first I'm gonna go along the outside and then run my bone folder over that to make sure that the tape is nice and stuck to the paper. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the inside. And I find that this step, like running your bone folder over your tape really helps a lot. It helps it to stick to the cardstock. Um, otherwise it may not stick and it may kind of come off as you're peeling it off and make a mess. So it's just kind of a, a, a step that I like to add to my card making to just make everything go smoothly and neatly. And then when I adhere it, I also go over the side with my bone folder as well. And if there's any excess tape hanging off the sides, I just cut it off. And now we're gonna assemble our before and after. So I'm gonna take the after scene and just put it into the slot in that folder for the before scene. I am going to make sure that the after scene is flush with the bottom of the before scene. And then I am gonna take my thumb and just press in on those little um, open slots on the right until the little piece from the after pokes through. So if you see that, that's how you get the two scenes to work together. You just flip it over, make sure it's flush with the bottom, and then just um, run your finger um, along the edges to pop the little piece of paper through the slot. It will make sense when it's in your hand. And here I'm just making sure that everything is working properly and um, it appears that it is. I like to kind of go back and forth maybe five or six times just to make train the paper, I guess, to make sure that it, it knows um, the direction it needs to go. <laughs> you can also use some um, powder in here if you want to make your your track work a little bit better. I find that it's not really necessary when you're if you're using thin enough paper. And then once you have your track in place, make sure it's flush with the bottom and then close your package and then just make sure it is all firmly in place. And that is it. Now we can start decorating our mechanism. So I have this little pull tab that I cut out with some of the new pattern paper from Lawn Fawn and we're just gonna attach that to the top of this tab here. And then I'm gonna apply some letters, some cutout letters that I just cut another pull tab with silver and then just use the little um, letters from, from that and threw the tag itself out. And then I'm just popping it in and because I already have adhesive from when I apply the tag, those little, um, letters fit in nicely there and I didn't have to use liquid glue, which might have, um, you know, made a, a little bit of a mess. So now this is important. You need to be careful where you put the adhesive. You don't want to put adhesive anywhere on that window, wherever you see those little flaps. So I just put a thin line of an eighth inch score tape on either side and then just a little bit of adhesive along the top and bottom and that's it. Um, 
And now let's make sure everything's working and it is. So we'll put that aside and now we can start decorating our card. So this little piece here, I'm gonna use it to make like a little rack to hang some um, spoons and other utensils um, for our little mice who are gonna be baking. You could also um, use this little piece on the stove if you wanna make it look like maybe there are some air vents on the stove or you can attach the knobs to this little strip. I did that on the other version of the card that you'll see in the pictures. That's another way to use this. I just thought it would be fun to make it look like there's a little utensil rack above the stove for this card. I'm going to apply a layer of foam tape to the back of our little magic picture changer oven um, just so that it's easier to for the recipient to pull the pull tab since we are adding this to a card. It's, you could also make this a standalone card where it would be easier to use the pull tab. But for this, we're going to attach it to a card and just pop it up a little to make it easier to pull the tab. And now we are going to um, work on our sentiment. So I'm using the Happy Holiday sentiment from, this is an older stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and I'm going to use one of the wavy banners here and just um, use some white embossing powder. The paper I'm using is the new um, paper pa pattern paper that Lawn Fawn just released. Um, I like that it's versatile enough that you can um, use it for embossed sentiments. It just helps to tie the card together. And then also we're going to add this sentiment that says, let's bake the world a better place. And I used a nice, I think it's a gingerbread colored um, card stock. Um, I think it's called paper bag from Lawn Fawn, but I like to think of it as gingerbread because it's a pretty warm brown color that gingerbread would be. And I put some foam tape under our sentiment there as well. And then under our wavy sentiment, there is foam tape also. We're just going to attach those together. And then I just glued down the part that is sitting directly on the stove. We're going to add this little pot holder. That is one of the decorations including it included in the oven add-on and then we'll add our mice from a creature was stirring and I just colored them in with some warm gray colors I put a little pot on top of our stove that's also in the oven add-on and then some little holly we'll add a little Christmas tree cookie and then we'll add a little gingerbread man and then a little mice mouse gingerbread man and I think that they just fit in so nicely with the sentiment that says let's bake the world a better place so we have these two little mice working together we have these little um, gingerbread creatures who are holding hands in the center of the stove and then we have our little decorations around the scene so let's take a look at how this works so here it is and at this point I realized that my black I went too far up the um, panel so I'm just going to color in the rest of our um, pull tab with the gray so that it's consistent and so let's give that a try again so it's just so sweet and my tab isn't working that great right now just because the paper is wet because I had just um, colored it with Copics but once it dries it will be fine and work as well as the one that we saw in the beginning of the video. So here is the card I showed you at the beginning of the video. So let's play with that again. So we have our little before scene, our little after scene. And then I just love playing before, after, before, after. And that is all I have for you today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this gives you enough information to be able to make your own um, magic picture changer cards using the new oven die add-on and a creature we're stirring stamp set from Lawn Fawn. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you again soon in another video.